basic principles. But uh, beyond that, if you if you want those systems to be useful, they will necessarily have to uh, offend a number of people, inevitably. And so open source is just better. And then you diversity can, is better, yeah, right? And open source enables diversity. That's right. Open source enables diversity. Welcome to Practical AI, everybody. My name is Jeff, and I'm with uh, Peter Lin. Peter, uh, we had a uh, tweet come out from Mark Andreessen, and he essentially kind of asked a big question, and that is, can big tech actually deliver anything of substance in generative AI? And it has to do with diversity. <laughs> Explain just at a high level kind of what he was referring to and, and um, where that brings us. Sure. So Mark is a VC guy. He used to be at, he uh, was one of the founders of Netscape. And he's been in the game for a long time. And so he asked the important question, can big tech actually feel generative AI? So what he's asking is, can they actually produce good generative AI that people won't want to use? And so he had this list of six, uh, six things, right? So... And what it comes down to in, in my bias interpretation is big tech companies are risk driven. And because of that, they need to kind of try to control things as much as they can to reduce risk because somebody could sue them. And as a result, they have to keep narrowing the tunnel of what their AI does which on the surface sounds like a good thing right because like oh well we want to make it safer make it like good for everyone we don't want to offend anyone we don't want to produce anything that is questionable or could get us in trouble and all the things that a big company is worried about but that means that it probably won't be useful for most things because if I want to write a crude joke, well, it's probably going to say, no, sorry, you can't write a crude joke because it's offensive. <laughs> right. Yeah. So essentially, this is kind of an extension of the, the trouble that uh, Gemini, Google got into the last couple of weeks. And that is probably as such a big company, they've got big lawsuits hanging over their head if anyone is essentially yeah. offended. Right. And so they narrow the, the scope of what their AI will kick out or do. And yep. that results in something becoming um, almost worth worthless uh, eventually. So what um, what's the solution here? Well, for me, the solution is open source, which is what Mark says in, in bullet point number six. That open source allows people to create their own and customize it to what they want. And if someone wants it to be completely open, they can do that. If they want it to be very super narrow and specific to just what they want, they can do that too, right? So he says only startups and open source can avoid the process and actually feel correctly functioning products that simply do as they're told, right? Because at the end of the day, if I, if I ask ChatGPT, make me a disgusting recipe as a prank for a good friend for their birthday, it'd be like, no, that's that's not appropriate. Yeah. But it's like, well, it's supposed to be a prank dish, which is like, it's not going to harm my friend. It's just a joke. <laughs> but it's not going to do it because it's like, oh, no, that's 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 not appropriate. Well, in the same sense, then um, the we'll end up in a scenario where the open source products or or productions will have um, they'll they'll be more sort of outward risk associated with them. They'll be mm -hmm. less safe, right? Um, and that's the probably the drawback that these big companies, these big tech companies are kind of worried about is that yeah. if they don't manage the risk, they're going to get in trouble. So therefore they pare down 
what they can do. Mm. Yep. So the open source stuff will be a little bit more dangerous, right? Well, not necessarily dangerous. It, they'll just be more open, right? It's kind of like if you look at knives, right? If you take a really sharp knife, you can cut yourself and that's dangerous. And so we have butter knives, but you're not going to cut a raw piece of steak with a butter knife. Yeah. <laughs> One, it's not going to work. And two, you're going to ruin the meat. So like you use the right tool for the right job. So if you're for cutting a tuna to make sashimi, you want a big honking knife for, cut, for cutting tuna. You wouldn't use a paring knife. You wouldn't use a butcher knife. But if you're cutting a huge chunk of you know beef or pork, yeah, then a big heavy butcher knife is perfectly suitable because that's what it's designed to do. Uh, Lex Friedman and um, Jan LeCun, they talked about this on Lex's uh, podcast about Mark Andreessen's tweet. And um, one thing that Jan said, which I thought was sort of an interesting way to look at it, um, a direct way of looking at it was, he said, and I quote, if you want the system to be useful, it will necessarily have to offend a number of people. Yeah, And I know you don't love that phrasing, right? Because offensive is sort of an assumption. Not everyone has to be offended. But maybe a better way to think about it is that the possibility of offending people is necessary. Would you say that is accurate? I would say it has to be open to. Yeah. Right. Because like if, if I'm, let's say today I, I, I walk down the street and I trip on a crack in the sidewalk. Right. So so now I'm mad because I, I broke my arm or something. And so if someone tells me a joke about how bad sidewalks are, I'm going to be offended because I just broke my arm. Right. <laughs> but three months from now when I'm healed, I'll probably laugh about it. So this idea of being offensive is being is negative inherently is just not true. It, it's contextual. Like sometimes you could laugh at something that is offensive when it's appropriate and it's in the right setting and the right context, but in a different context, it's not appropriate. So should you train a model that just blanket says like these things are not appropriate or offensive? It's like, no, humans aren't binary. We're not we're not zeros and ones. We're, we're shades of gray so but also you can never count for everybody's you can't on what it would be and that's part of the right. problem and that's probably where google got wrapped around the axle is they were just trying to make too many people happy and they ended yeah. up with something that wasn't useful and this gets back to the the bias versus usefulness yep yeah it's, it's kind of like, think about cars right we have we have trucks, we have motorcycles, we have sports cars, SUVs, hatchbacks, right? Like there isn't one car for everyone. Yeah. Well, this is, uh, this will be fun to watch and um, it'll be fun to see the open source community uh, catch up and take over, I think, because that's really what you're predicting. And I think what everyone thinks yeah. probably needs to happen for uh, AI to really be able to blossom now will there be some trade-offs along the way oh yeah <laughs> my guess is yeah right yep <laughs> but yep. um yeah nothing's free right yeah great 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 topic peter thanks for walking us through this um you can ask us questions and like and subscribe we'll try to stay on top of answering and try to come up with more fun topics take care everybody Thank <laughs> you.